In this video, let's create our very first React Native project. Let's start by setting up our development environment. For React Native, we'll need two things installed, Node.js and a code editor of your choice. For Node, visit nodejs.org, download and install the latest stable release. If you already have it installed, make sure to update it. As for the code editor, I recommend using VS Code, which you can download from code.visualstudio.com. I have created a folder called React Native Course and opened VS Code inside the folder. This folder will serve as our workspace throughout the series. Now that our development environment is set up, let's proceed to create our first React Native project. Technically, it will be an expo project. Creating a new expo project is as simple as running a single line of code. Open the terminal in VS Code with control backtick being the shortcut and enter the following command. npx create hyphen expo hyphen app at latest space hello world. Create Expo App is a command line tool which creates a new React Native project with the Expo package already installed. We add at latest to install the latest version of Expo released just this week. Press enter and this will take a few seconds to run. Once completed, a new project directory will be created and all the necessary dependencies will be installed to get the project up and running locally. In the terminal, you'll also see an instruction on how to run your project. However, before we do that, let's take a few minutes to understand the different files and folders generated by Create Expo app. First, we have the package.json file. This file contains the project dependencies, scripts, and metadata. In the Dependencies section, you'll find essential packages like Expo, React, and React Native. Additionally, there's a package called Expo Status Bar, which controls the application's status bar, and we will explore this further in the series. The Babel package is listed as a dev dependency. Regarding scripts, the start script is used to initiate the development server, and there are additional scripts to specifically target Android, iOS, or web platforms. Next, we have the package-lock.json file, which ensures consistent installation of project dependencies. You don't need to worry about this file, as it is automatically generated based on your package.json file. Moving on, we have the babel.config.js file, which serves as the Babel configuration file. It applies the Babel preset expo preset, extending the default React Native preset. This configuration adds support for decorators, tree shaking web packages, and loading font icons with optional native dependencies, provided they're installed. If desired, you can modify this file to include additional Babel plugins or presets. Now let's focus on the app.json file. This is an important file as it contains configuration options for the project. These options alter the project's behavior during development, building, submitting, and updating the app. Throughout the series, we'll explore and learn about the different entries in this file. Moving on, we have the app.js file. This file serves as the default screen of our project. It acts as the root file that loads when you start the development server with the command npm start. Currently, it contains only one line of text, which we will see when we run the application. Next, we have the git ignore file, and this file allows you to specify the files and folders that shouldn't be tracked by the version control system. Lastly, let's discuss the folders. The first one is the node modules folder. This folder is automatically generated when you run the create expo app command. It houses all the project dependencies and is automatically git ignored. So you don't have to worry about it. Finally, we have the assets folder, 
which contains various resources. It includes adaptive icon.png used for Android, icon.png used as the app icon for iOS, splash.png, an image for the project's splash screen, and favicon.png used if the application runs in a browser. This assets folder serves as a storage location for images, audio files, video files, and other resources that need to be bundled with the application. All right, that covers the explanation of the different files and folders generated by Create Expo app. It's finally time to run our first React Native Expo app. I'll see you in the next video.